Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my Flash episode 20 video. So many awesome flashbacks we have to talk about. And there's a couple other things that they teased that are gonna be happening next week, as well as the finale. So I'll try to address those too. If you're wondering why the plot seems like it's starting to move faster and faster, it's because there's only 23 episodes this season. So next week will kind of be like the beginning of the end. Just careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the episode yet, starting with top five moments. Number five, Team Flash learns all about the Gideon computer. Barry learns that he creates the Gideon computer, which is why it obeys his commands. Learns all about his future, like they actually read the future newspaper. And they learn that the reverse Flash's name is Eobard Thawne. I was kind of wondering how that was going to happen. Like they knew the name, the reverse Flash, in Harrison Wells, but they didn't know that he was Eobard Thawne. They don't know anything about the future, until now. If you didn't recognize the voice, it's Marina Baccarin from Gotham. She's also going to be in the Deadpool movie too. She, she's all over the place. We, we actually see her go into human computer form. We've seen her as a floaty head before, and we, we've seen her on the reverse Flash's wrist, but now it's like a much more full-on shot. I'm actually kind of curious as to why they did it this way, why she wasn't just a floaty head. But this is not the last we've seen of the Gideon computer. All the computer screens were playing the CCTV footage that the reverse Flash had been capturing. It's possible that he took the AI with him whenever he left. We also got that awesome Back to the Future joke, where, whereby Cisco is like, Hey, look at that flash suit that you're wearing. That looks way cooler than this. Wait, wait a minute. Did we get the idea because we looked at this? That will actually be what the flash suit looks like. They'll, they'll eventually do the classic logo, but I don't know if that's going to be season two or if we'll see that before the finale. Other really important things learned. The reverse flash went back in time to kill Barry and then killed Nora Allen because he was angry. That probably has something to do with adult Barry going back in time to try and stop the reverse flash. Like future Barry prevents the death of young Barry. So as a consolation, the reverse flash kills Nora Allen. We'll continue to go back to that moment in time, so, so we'll get more perspective on it as we build towards the finale. I know everyone's asking about Green Arrow, Hawkgirl, the, you know, the stuff that it actually said in the future newspaper. This could be something that they deliver in the form of a promo for the spin-off series. Just save it in your bookmarks. The Flash is pretty good about delivering on promises it makes, so they said Hawkgirl, we know she's going to be in the spin-off. This is probably going to connect that somehow. Moving on to number four, Eddie wants to propose to Iris. It doesn't take a genetically enhanced gorilla to figure out that there's no way this is going down. The show keeps finding ways to drive wedges between Iris and Eddie, and finding other ways to push Barry and Iris together. As much as it's okay for TV shows to, to mess with the timeline and, and play around with Ken a little bit, eventually we will get to like that West Allen relationship, for, for those of you that are big fans of that. If you don't care about the relationships on the show, you know, don't worry. They're going to use this relationship as a point of falling out between Eddie and Barry. Remember, the reverse flash said that Eddie is his insurance policy. Iris is probably going to be at the nexus of that. And while all this is going on, Iris figures out that Barry is the flash. Moving on to number three, the reverse flash reveals to Eddie that he is his descendant. I like how Eddie for, for a moment thought that it might have been about him the whole time. When he said that Eddie is his insurance policy, he's just talking about, you know, a future Eobard Thawn being born. So if he dies as a result of what happens in the finale, then a future Eobard Thawn will still be born, and he can do it again. As you notice, Eobard Thawn, you know, throws the ring to the side. All he needs for that insurance policy to pay out, so to speak, is for Eddie to do what he did originally. Eddie and Iris only started their relationship because Barry went into the coma because Eobard Thawn jump-started the process of him becoming the Flash. In the original timeline, the reason that Barry and Iris are married in 2024 is because he never went into a coma, so their relationship developed much, much quicker. The accident in the coma took things in a different direction, which is where you get to Eddie and Iris. So Eobard Thawne will probably do some things to double down on that insurance policy, you know, making sure that Eddie does not end up with Iris. One easy way to do that would be to kill her. Moving on to number two, Cisco goes into a waking dream to find out what happened in the alternate timeline. This is a bit of a twist. Everybody, when, when we saw this in the trailer earlier, thought that it might be part of like some Cisco vibe technology. Turns out it's all about waking dreams. The cast has teased that we might see Killer Frost, Caitlin Snow, before we see Cisco vibe. But when we do eventually see Cisco vibe, I think it'll be like a tech based vibe. He, he won't be like a meta human. So don't worry, we'll get there eventually. But essentially, we visited the alternate timeline twice. There was the first time in the waking dream, and then again when they tried to recreate it in real life. So both times, the speeches that Harrison Wells gives are just like a little bit different. The second time was mostly because he was Hannibal Bates. It wasn't really Harrison Wells. 
And finally, my number one WTF moment, Harrison Wells calls their bluff and ends up trapping them when they tried to trap him. If you're a little confused with Barry's line at the end, we thought we were creating a trap for him, but he was trapping us the whole time. What that was referring to wasn't just specifically what happened in this episode. It was referring to the series of events since the particle accelerator explosion. Wells has been trying to maneuver Barry into a position where he can tap into his speed force so he can go back to the future. That's the trap, so Team Flash is still like inside the trap. We probably won't see him spring that trap until the finale. That's like, you know, the big WTF finale moment. So like each time Barry unlocks a new ability, like he did in this episode, you know, spinning his arms to create a vacuum, he gets a little bit more powerful and a little bit closer to where the reverse flash needs him to be. The comics tell like a slightly different story. They, they tell more of like a, a positive negative charge to the speed force, whereby any time the flash taps into the speed force, he makes the reverse flash more powerful. Like he charges the negative speed force, which is what the reverse flash taps into. I haven't seen any evidence that the show is going to get really granular with, with how they describe the speed force in terms of like positive, negative charge. I think what they'll do is they'll simplify it and they'll just have the reverse flash try to siphon off the speed force from Barry once he gets powerful enough. The Hannibal Bates twist was really good, especially the reverse flash calling them and saying, you know, you're smart, but you're not that smart. We will have a confrontation very, very soon. That's probably referring to what this moment is right here, this image. Firestorm, Ray Shamel, and the flash versus the reverse flash. There was that recent trailer they posted where they said the particle accelerator is charged. Cisco has that line. Because Cisco had the line, it might be Team Flash trying to use the particle accelerator to take down the reverse flash. Really the only surefire way for Team Flash to neutralize the reverse flash is to take away his speed force. That's actually something they addressed in, in the Wally West era of the Flash comics. He was able to transfer speed force. So we might see a version of that this season. Here's my big question for you guys. How do you think that the Reverse Flash is going to try and manipulate Eddie Thawne moving into the finale? Eddie has a lot of potential to become a villain in a future season. Right now he's the Flash's best friend, but Hunter Solomon was Wally West's best friend. And even though I like the Eobar Thawne Reverse Flash way more, Eddie could totally become another version of the Reverse Flash. There were a couple really big Easter eggs that I haven't mentioned yet already. When Eobard Dawn is talking about cops in 100 years being just as useless as they are now, he was actually talking about his brother. If you read the Road to Flashpoint comic book, it tells the story of Eobard Dawn. It, it tells what happened to him as a child, how he became the Reverse Flash the first time. At a certain point, he started to do some illegal research. His brother, who had become a police officer, tried to stop him. A future version of Eobard Dawn, who had already become the Reverse Flash, went back in time and eliminated his brother from the time stream so that his brother never existed in the first place to stop him. Eobarthon's one of those characters in the comics that doesn't hesitate to edit his own timeline for his own benefit. Barry here puts Captain Cold's glasses on from the comics. This is just what they look like in the comics. And at the end of the episode, when Barry says, I couldn't have done this without you, and Harrison Wells says, I feel the same about you. He's obviously talking about you know, Barry becoming the Flash, creating the Speed Force. He's like the point of origin of the Speed Force. Many, many years in the future, Eobard Thawne uncovers a time capsule with Barry Allen's Flash suit and uses it to reverse engineer Flash powers, which is why he called himself the Reverse Flash. He literally reverse engineered the Flash. There was a whole bunch of Cisco movie Easter eggs, you know, Kali Ma, Temple of Doom, the Back to the Future Polaroid with Marty disappearing based on how they altered the timeline. But if you saw any others, just write them below in the comments. Next week is a really big episode. It's called Grodd Lives. Going to be a big Grodd episode, obviously. They released these images, so you kind of see what Grodd looks like in better lighting. It's a nice mirror image of this panel of the Flash. Grodd is one of those really awesome characters that they probably won't be able to use a whole bunch of just because he's kind of expensive to do in CG. Tomorrow, a new Arrow video coming after the episode airs. Be sure to subscribe to get it. I'm still wondering what Team Arrow is going to do to get Oliver out of the League of Assassins, or if it's going to be his decision. While you guys wait for all that stuff to post, in case you haven't seen it, I posted a Gotham video from last night. You can click here to watch it, and you can click here for all my other Flash and Arrow videos. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tomorrow.